Yeah. We're bike, baby. Quarterbacks, tight ends, top 15 rankings at each position. We're doing both of them in this video today. We did the top 20 for running backs and wide receivers last week. Those videos will be linked in the description. We will be launching our full rankings for the season very, very soon on our website, bdge.co. Stay tuned for that. Today, top 15 at both positions, quarterbacks, tight ends. We'll do it quickly, as we always say, and then we ended up doing it for 45 minutes. But I promise this is going to be, this is going to be a, I don't know what the time says down there right now. We're going sub 12 minutes on this video. I just want to get the rankings out for you guys to the positions that y'all don't really care about that much. I care about them. I'm a good, I'm a good ass person. Y'all are not. I know how you operate. You know what we got to do. You thought I wasn't already tucked, didn't you? I stay tucked. Tuck your shirts in. Stop yelling. Let's fucking eat. All right. All right, all right, all right. Let's start with the quarterback one this year. No surprise here. Josh Allen does everything, has everything. The weapons, the ground game, the legs, the arm, the height, the dashing good looks. What else do we need to say here? At number two, we have Justin Herbert over Patrick Mahomes coming off of a massive season. And I think it could have been bigger, honestly. But I love the way that this offense played. They played with urgency. They have fantastic weapons there for Justin Herbert at his disposal. A very much improved offensive line. They got pace. They go for it on every fucking fourth down. Imagine if they actually converted a few fourth downs this year. Imagine what his stats would be like if they actually converted some of those fourth downs. It's going to happen eventually because analytics. All right, Herbert here in for another massive year. He's, you know, entering his prime. He's super, super young. Uh, so no argument here with Herbert. Mahomes, I have three just because, like, I, I just don't think you can drop him out of your top three. If we had another, like, Allen Herbert type player, maybe I'd throw him in there with them. But Mahomes will be number three. He loses Tyree Kill, so that's obviously a uh, little bit of a downgrade for him in the passing game. I just feel like he's good enough to the point where he will make whatever work with Juju or Sky Moore, and somehow he'll even make Nicole Hardman good. You know how good you got to be as a quarterback to make Mikko Hardman a fantasy viable player? I think Mahomes might might fuck around and do that this year. So he's three. I got Burrow at four. This feels like the time you want to buy Burrow, right? Like, I think people will say, oh, you know, he wasn't actually as good as we think he was last year in terms of, like, statistics. But, you know, you want to ride that upward trajectory, right? And they've, again, an improved offensive line, adding Lyle Collins, adding Alex Cafes. They, they added a bunch of pieces to that old line. And, of course, he's got arguably the best wide receiver weapon combo duo trio in the NFL right now. He's also not coming off the ACL tear this year. So I think they let it rip this year in Cincinnati, go a little bit more pass heavy, and we could see those numbers skyrocket for Joe Burrow. He's at four. Kyler at five. People are hesitant on Kyler. I'm fine with it. Again, I talked about this in a video last week. If you go look at his like metrics on an individual basis, go to playerprofiler.com. Look at Kyler Murray. He was still awesome. And it's going to hurt not having D-Hop for the first six games. But uh, I listened to a good injury podcast yesterday, and we're not worried about D-Hop's long-term play. Um, he had surgery at the end of last year on something that's minor, and he'll be fully recovered for it. So I think when D-Hop gets back on the field, we'll see like the Kyler Murray we've gotten accustomed to seeing in that Arizona offense. So Kyler at five, Jalen Hurts at six. Uh, I mean, he was awesome last year. He'll be awesome again this year. And now you add A.J. Brown. So we love Jalen Hurts. Tom Brady right behind him at seven. Feels a little bit criminal, but like, I don't know. We might We might be without Chris Godwin or at least without you know, who we think Chris Godwin is for the first like half of the season. Uh, Antonio Brown's obviously gone. So Gronk, uh, Gronk's probably coming back. I don't know like when he's going to get on the field and maybe that doesn't matter. Or maybe he's just getting fucking old and he's not as good as he was anymore, you know? So it's like, I feel like there's a few moving parts where we might see this team go a little bit more run heavy in 2022 and not throw the ball 78 times a game. So, I mean, I'm happy to have Brady's my QB one. Don't get me wrong. He'll probably throw 40 touchdowns again this year. I could see a world where they just kind of peel back on the passing attempts this year and just it doesn't make Tom Brady have those weekly ceiling games of like Jalen Hurts or Kyler Murray guys who get it done on the ground right after him I have Russ in Denver teaming up with Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy Albert O Tim Patrick KJ Hamler this run game love Russ love Russ in Denver I think well, Russ is definitely biking Denver man uh then we have Lamar Jackson at number nine this is going to be a Baltimore team that was completely different from last year losing Hollywood's gonna hurt but they didn't want to go pass heavy. They they were forced to with all the running backs that got hurt. I think they get back to their roots. I think they're ground, pound, and that makes Lamar Jackson even more dangerous because you don't know where the ball's going in the backfield. So I'm in on Lamar at number nine. He's obviously taking a step back from where he was the number one overall fantasy quarterback a few years ago. Um, but like, you know, you're not going to have a problem with him at QB9 as a quarterback one for your team. Stafford in LA, great first year. Going to be even better second year. Cooper Cup, Allen Robinson, it's a good team. 
good fucking team, good offense, high paced. You know, he's just like that typical QB one that you know probably can't contend for overall Q- quarterback one, but he is fine to be your your QB one if you get him you know, a little bit later, single quarterback league. You're happy you took him, set it, forget it. Dak Prescott at number eleven. Now this team has been so pass heavy, seeing it has been such a fast paced offense, but I'm interested to see what they do this year. I think they continue to go down that route and like that's the theme of their offense for the most part. But I think there's also a chance that they rely a little bit more on the ground game this year because they lose Cooper, because Michael Gallup's hurt. They did draft Jalen Tolbert, who I absolutely love. Um, Their run blocking offensive line last year was so, so good. They were like number two or one in the NFL last year, run blocking per PFF. Not as good in the passing game. It's possible that we see a little bit of regression in terms of volume for the Dallas passing offense. And uh, Dak just always just made me a little bit worrisome as a fantasy quarterback, to be completely honest with you. So quarterback 11, definitely still in the QB1 range, but I think losing a few of those weapons definitely hurts his upside. We have Trey Lance at quarterback 12. Now, I know this is risque, but if he gets on the field, guys, he doesn't even need to be a good quarterback to be a great fantasy quarterback. They have all the weapons in the world there for him to succeed. You know, we saw such a small sample size last year, a half of a game, one game, like bad games, and still ended up 20, 22 fantasy points per game. So Trey Lance in at 12, obviously we got to see what happens with Jimmy G, but it sounds like everything is lined up for Trey Lance to be the QB 12 here. Then we have Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr, and I'm going to lump these two guys together because we have Aaron Rodgers, who was awesome last year. I think he threw 37 passing touchdowns. We have Derek Carr, who threw for 4,800 passing yards, but only 23 passing touchdowns. I've said this in a few of my videos, but we shouldn't be surprised whatsoever now that Devontae Adams swaps from Green Bay over to Las Vegas if those touchdown numbers converge. You take seven from Rodgers, you add that seven to Derek Carr's, and they're both at 30. I would be surprised if Derek Carr wasn't above 30. He should probably be at 32, 33, 34. He's got Josh McDaniels now over as the um, as the head of that offense in Las Vegas, so they're probably going to be very pass heavy. And that that trio of you know Waller and Devontae Adams and Hunter Ren- Hunter Renfro is pretty fucking sexy over there. Um, so I have Rodgers at 13. I have Carr at 14. I really, you know, I, I think Green Bay is going to go so much more run heavy than they've been in the previous years. AJ Dillon, Aaron Jones going to get so much work. Here's the problem, dude. If Christian Watson turns out to be a bust, that Green Bay offense, the passing offense is going to fucking implode. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw like a handful, four or five, six games of Aaron Rodgers throwing for like 180 yards and one touchdown or something like that. So you have a lot banking on one weapon who's a rookie that hasn't really proven much. And that scares me. So I might even take Derek Carr over Aaron Rodgers. Rodgers. We have Kirk Cousins at 15. And I think, you know, with the reports that we've seen come out the last couple of days, you can make the argument to take Kirk even higher. If this offense is going to go more pass heavy under the new regime, right? And they're going to be spreading the ball around from the guy that came over from uh, Kevin, Kevin O'Connell, I believe, coming over from the Rams. Um, they're talking about doing a lot more spread sets and they're talking about moving Justin Jefferson around like he was Cooper Cup. That, that passing offense is going to be fucking dynamite between him and Thielen and Irv Smith, who we'll talk about in a second. Um, so I got Kirk up at 15. But again, I think you can put him in the same tier as Rodgers and Derek Carr. And if you wanted to put him atop that tier, I would have no problem with it. So that is my top 15. Go yell at me in the comments if you see anything wrong with it. So I expect there to be no fucking yelling, all lowercase in the comment section. Again, if at any time you want to just grab these rankings, the easiest way to do so is by signing up on prize picks. And this will cover all season long rankings, the big, the top 200 big board, all these positional rankings. Um, it's got you covered. They're not live yet, but they will be in the next like two weeks or so. Our uh, engineer is working on the website, but you can go get access to it by going to prizepicks.com or downloading the app. The link is in the description. It'll take you straight to the app store. When you deposit $10 and you use promo code BDGE, you're going to get free access to everything on our site as well as an extra deposit match of whatever you threw down on prize picks. We've done a bunch of videos already, you know, going through our favorite season long player props. They've got the entire future set on their website already of like wide receivers like Brandon Cooks over under 950 receiving yards for the season. So we can smash the over on that. So you've got a whole gang of shit into your face hole value to you just by depositing $10 on prize picks with the with the promo code BG. So go do that. Do yourself a favor. Let's move to tight ends. Travis Kelsey is my one. Mark Andrews is the two. I get it. They're like, you know, they're, they're two converging planes. One looks like it's ascending. One is descending. That would be Travis Kelsey getting older, coming off his worst statistical year in a while. Still only average about half a fantasy point per game less than Mark Andrews. I think both of these guys for fantasy will do just as good, if not better this year, because both of them basically lost the same player. You have Hollywood Brown moving over to Arizona. That's like 140 targets out of that offense that you know, some of those are obviously going to go to Mark Andrews. You have Tyreek Hill leaving about the same amount of targets, and some of those are going to go to Travis Kelsey. 
Now, I feel more confident in Travis Kelsey continuing to do what he's done over and over and over and over again. Mark Andrews, again, the Baltimore offense, I think, is going to be way more similar to what we saw in 2018, 2019, 2020 than what we saw last year when they were forced to be pass heavy. And that obviously increased Mark Andrews' stats. So they're in the same tier for me. I think you can argue either way you want. I got Darren Waller at three. I've got Kyle Pitts at four and George Kittle at five. Waller, you know, Devontae Adams added to the mix. He's going to be a little bit more volatile and a, probably a little bit less of a ceiling player. But I think Kyle Pitts, like no more Matt Ryan. So he had a great rookie year over a thousand yards. He had basically three games that accounted for like 40% of his fantasy points. And they were against awful, awful defenses like the Jets, the Lions, and I can't remember the third one, but it was bad. And, you know, he'll he'll continue to get way, way, way better, obviously, and get more consistent. But hard to do that when you have Marcus Mariota throwing the ball. So I could see us being a bad team and still trying to run the ball at a way too high of a rate. So statistically, I could see Kyle Pitts' efficiency going way up, but like I don't see a lot of room to grow with the volume per se. Um, so I have Pitts at four. I'm not overly excited about it. Kittle, again, not overly excited about with Trey Lance taking over, run heavy offense, got a lot of weapons there, missed a lot of time with injuries as well. So that that tier I'm not too, too confident in. I'm probably fading it for the next tier of guys where I have Goddard at six, Dalton Schultz at seven, Hawkinson at eight, Ertz at nine, Dawson Knox at 10. I almost feel like the next 10 fucking guys are in a tier together. I'll just, we'll just kind of run through all of them together. We have Goddard, Schultz, Hawkinson, Ertz, Knox, Pat Fryermuth, Mike Kosicki, Albert O, Hunter Henry, Irv Smith. Now we have Irv Smith at number 15. And I don't know why I just jumped all the way down to 15, but I kind of want to talk about him because they don't have a third player in that offense. Like they, not a third pass catcher over the middle. And if they are going to be operating at more of a spread offense and they're going to be passing the ball at a much higher rate, they don't want to overutilize Dalvin Cook like they have with the old regime. Irv Smith could be a fucking player. Don't forget how good he was at the end of the year before he tore his ACL and missed all of last year. Really, really good prospect, super athletic tight end, and started to actually have production on the NFL field, which is exactly what you want to look for in tight end. So Irv Smith is a guy that I'm going to be owning a fucking ton of this year in fantasy football as like a tight end too that I could see exploding into the top 10 by the end of next year. Albert O, I'm intrigued. I don't want to get like overly excited about it. He has a lot of the boxes that you want to just like check and say like, oh, great offense, great quarterback, you know, super athletic. He's one that I'm, I'm still a little bit hesitant on because I want to see it over a long period of time rather than have just like a couple blow up games and attribute it to athleticism. So I'm not I'm not fading him whatsoever. I'm not like overly targeting him, but I think tight end 13 makes a little bit of sense. Kosicki at a, a 12, sure, they had Tyree Kill. So it's a little bit messy there in terms of like what his target volume could be. Pat Firemuth had a really nice year last year. I think he had 80 targets and seven touchdowns as a rookie. That's great, but they also add in you know, one, we don't know who the quarterback is. Two, they had Pickens, Calvin Austin. You know, we don't know, again, what his volume share is going to be because Deontay Johnson, Chase Claypool are there as well. So you kind of have to ask the question, what actually is his ceiling? And if you're going to be drafting guys in that like second tier, third tier, fourth tier range or whatever, you usually want to draft guys that have a little bit more ceiling, right? It's like all those guys are going to be finishing within half a point of each other in terms of points per game. So why not go for the guy that has the upside to score 12 touchdowns or has the upside to catch 90 balls or something like that. Hard to say that Pat Firemuth actually has that. They were also a team that had like an insanely high pass rate last year. They they attempted the single most pass attempts per game last year or had the highest pass rate. I forget which one, one of the two. Something crazy. Hard to say they do that again with a rookie or Mitch Trubisky at the quarterback position. Uh, Knox. I was super high on Knox and then people kept making the comparison of Robert Tunyon and then it just kept giving me like flashbacks and anxiety in my chest because I was so high on Robert Tunyon. I don't know what to think. I really don't. I could sit here with honesty and be like, I love Dawson Knox. He's super athletic. He just scored a fuckload of touchdowns. He's tied to Josh Allen. But it feels like I'm actually repeating everything that I just said with Robert Tunyon last offseason. And uh, it breaks my fucking heart. So let's let you guys decide what you want to do with Knox. Zach Ertz, I had a tweet a couple weeks ago about what Zach Ertz did once he once he landed in Arizona. And if you look at his targets, his receptions, his receiving yards, and you take the 10 games he was in Arizona and you pace them out to 16 games, the only two tight ends that were above him statistically were Kelsey and Andrews. Like he was awesome in Arizona last year. They draft Trey McBride, which may or may not really hurt him. He's a rookie. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins out for six games, so I think that helps to supplement it a little bit. I think Ertz is going to be one of the most underrated tight ends in fantasy football this year. Hawkinson, I don't know if we have a ceiling there with Hawkinson. He was, uh, he hasn't been great. He has, He's okay. He's someone that I'm like, comfortable using as my tight end one, but not overly excited about him. I might be able to move Ertz over Hawkinson a little bit. We're just talking this out. We're just being friends here, right? This is a safe space where we can look at our rankings and we can be objective and we could say this or that. And then as you could see me getting excited about certain players and then not excited about other players, maybe we adjust the ranks, okay? Dalton Schultz is a guy that I'm very excited about with, again, Amari Cooper and Michael Gallup possibly, you know, missing that time 
Dalton Schultz could be the single biggest beneficiary. Maybe CeeDee Lamb, but y'all get the point. I think Schultz, Zeke, and CeeDee Lamb are going to make such a strong target share pie there in Dallas that they're all fucking good picks. So let's run it. Let's fucking run it with this. All right. We've got our top 15 quarterbacks. We've got our top 15 tight ends. And I feel pretty good about them. How y'all feel about them? Let me know in the comments section. Yell at me. I give you permission to use the caps lock, to use uppercase. I give you permission to do so. If you do, though, you got to hit the button that looks like this. You got to put the D in it. Put the D in subscribe so you become subscribed. And thus, you can watch all of our videos going forward. I believe I'll be going live tomorrow for Cune Assault Saturday or maybe live mock draft. Um, I post the link to those in Discord. So join our Discord completely free. And again, go check out the other ranking videos we put up in the previous week or two. Running backs, wide receivers. I love y'all. And I am the freak out.